Hey everyone, how you doing? It's Sammy Caps here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And we are 24 hours away from Diablo 4's PTR, the public test realm for season four, where Battle.net users will be able to get in there and get their hands in on some of the new mechanics coming down in season four on May 14th. In this video, man, I've been reading the patch notes over and over and over. I got a ton of notes. And in this video, I kind of want to review the new, what I'd like to call the new end game loop for Diablo 4. I'm going to try to break it down for you and kind of cement what the process in gearing up with these new mechanics is going to look like potentially in the PTR and in season four. So I got a lot of notes. I got a lot of stuff to talk about. I hope you'll stick around and join me. We got a lot of things to discuss. So we'll see you on the other side. Okay, so I wanted to make this video because the patch notes that have been out now for a while, they're pretty meaty. And although this is gonna be a pretty, uh, pretty lengthy video, I wanted to kind of just summarize, package it all up, and hopefully make sense uh, for when you watch this video to kind of give you an idea, kind of what the workflow is going to be like in the PTR, which I will be participating in and streaming live on Twitch. Sammy Caps is my channel. Please come and watch. I stream every evening. But anyway, um, forgive me, I have a lot of notes and I'm going to be referring to them because I don't want to miss anything. Um, but I want to discuss kind of what the PTR is going to be like and feel like hopefully for those of you that are participating. So the PTR um, is going to be dropped and available to Battle.net users in what Diablo 4 calls their largest regions, North America, Europe, Korea, Japan, South America, and Australia. Once you log in to Battle.net, your account will car carry over the following account-based progress. Account-based, okay? So this is what you're going to have access to as soon as you log in to the PTR on Battle.net you will be able to instantly level your get your character to level 100 so you can boost your character right away to level 100 upon boosting your character you're going to get the following 100 million gold a thousand noble two random sets of ancestral gear at item power 920 upgraded potions fully unlocked paragon glyphs up to 10 tempering manuals they're class specific we're going to discuss more about the crafting later on in the video base amount of all consumable materials um, it does not include materials for res resources specifically needed for master working scattered prisms and respl resplendent sparks and we'll talk about these materials later on in the video Materials to enter the pit and nightmare dungeons are granted. Awesome. Completed class system mechanics, enchantments for sorcerers, etc. is one thing that they highlighted. No, this boost can be repeated with new characters on the PTR and you can trade between characters as needed. So for those of you that are planning on taking the one week PTR testing, on several characters, two or three characters. The good news is you'll be able to boost multiple characters, classes in the PTR. Fog of War will be completely cleared. And regardless of whether you choose to boost your character for the PTR, legendary drop rates will be doubled. Now, they did highlight the fact that some things are going to intentionally not uh, like left out because um, they want to test the flow that they want to keep an eye out. So for example, the Codex of Power will not be fully unlocked, okay? So this is what you can expect when you log in to the PTR. 
I kind of wanted to get wrap your mind around the fact that you can make a decision early on whether you want to start from zero or take advantage of what Activision Blizzard King is giving you and boosting your character right from the get-go to level 100. Now, campaign will be completed. Mounts and skill points will be there. Fog of War will be cleared. Altar of Lilith stat bonuses all there. So you basically have the potential to boost and walk in like a Gucci master right away from the PTR. And who would not want to take advantage of that? But then again, you may choose to get the full experience and start from scratch. Now, you may want to start from scratch because there's been world tier XP changes, making it more um, quicker to level up your character. Season four, we'll see a juiced up version of all the world tiers when it comes to XPs. These are the changes that are coming in season four and will be visible to us in the PTR. There's increased, increased XP in all the world tiers. So world tier two, will now grant a 50% XP, okay? 50% um, in World Tier 2. World Tier 3 will be 150% XP. And World Tier 3, I typically enter around 33, 35, 40-ish, the latest. Um, so World Tier 3 now offers 150 XP. World Tier 4, 250 XP. Again, I'm usually in world tier four, if memory serves me correct, around level 50, 53, 55-ish, 60 the latest. Um, so these XP bumps are really gonna make leveling a character to 100 that much quicker. Now, I don't know who in their right would start the game in world tier one, when you get a 50 XP gain in World Tier 2, I know I will be starting in World Tier 2 bare minimum uh, because of the 50% XP. But these, this is the foundation moving forward from Season 4 on. These are going to be the new XP bonuses you will receive as you enter into the different World Tiers. Now, some things in reference to the PTR, which in reference is season four. Remember, they talked about affixes. Now, quality over quantity, right? So there's going to be reduced number of aff affixes. So legendaries, now three on legendary items and two affixes on rare items. No more damage on Tuesday, apparently, but Affixes are getting shrunk down. Three on legendary, two on rare. Only sacred items in world tier three and only ancestral items in world tier four. Those are the drops. So we'll only see sacred items, world tier three, ancestral items in world tier four. Again, the message and the theme quality over quantity. So these are another things coming to the PTR and in season four. Now, I'm giving you the minutia of the PTR, but what I really wanted to discuss today is what I like to call the new end game loop. Basically, there's a lot of stuff and I've already started envisioning how my end game loop, if this grabs me, what it's going to look like and I wanna share that with you. So. Let's discuss the new end game being introduced in season four, but we're gonna get our hands wet with it in the PTR. And the first thing is the Artificer's Pit, the pit, um, which you can access once you clear a level 45 nightmare dungeon. Now, you will receive a priority quest to complete a level 45 nightmare dungeon. Upon completion, you <clears throat> upon completion of this quest, you will start to collect ruin shards, which we'll discuss later on. 
Um, and once you complete this priority quest, you will start create. You'll start obtaining ruin shards during endgame activity. You will need these rune shards to open up the pit. Now, what's the pit? <laughs> the pit. <laughs> Greater rifts, as people are referring to them. Uh, the pit. Uh, first of all, the pit has a is a is a time based activity. Okay, and specifically, it's a ten minute activity where you need to slay monsters and once you've slayed enough a portal opens up and um you will um uh the portal will take you to the boss arena and killing the boss before the time you're expired before the time expires will grant you master working materials and unlocks the next tier of the pit so going into the pit grants you loot and it grants you the mastering, master working materials. We're going to discuss master working materials in a little bit. And it also unlocks the next tier. There's hundreds of levels in the pit. And the further you go down the pit, the greater the loot. And I'll explain a little bit more after that. And the pit has hundreds of levels of difficulty. Um, and I do want to mention a couple of caveats here, okay? If the timer expires before you finish running through the pit, you'll still get loot, but you're not going to receive any master working material. And again, we're going to get into master working and hopefully this all will gel together. Now, the pit can be done with groups of four, but... The player who opened the pit is the only one that's going to get the lion's share of the materials and the drops. So only the player who opened the pit has a chance of receiving the materials used for summoning tormented echoes. I'm going to get into the tormented echoes. Now, another thing, this timer, the 10 minute timer, if you die, time gets deducted. Okay. So every time you die, they deduct time from that 10 minutes, okay? So the first death, death is 30 seconds. The second death is 60 seconds. The third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, whatever, is 90 seconds every time th your third death and on. So every, every death after three and more is 90 seconds, 90 seconds, 90 seconds, 90 seconds. So keep that in mind, okay? So... The pit, hundreds of levels of difficulty, and that's where you receive master working material, okay? Remember that. Now, new crafting system coming to the game. There are two mechanics to upgrade gear, tempering and master working. Now, these new systems will allow you to add affixes to your items at the blacksmith, through a new reusable item that can drop from most content in the game called tempering manuals. Now, affixes can be re-rolled up to an item's temper re-roll limit. Ancestral items can have two tempered affixes from different categories. Now, greater affixes only appear on ancestral, legendary, and unique items. These are more powerful versions of normal affixes with a 1.5 multiplier on the affix's maximum roll. An item with a greater affix will be immediately ob obvious with a unique audio cue. I can't wait to hear this cue. As well as a 1 to 4 next to the item name indicating how many affixes are greater. Okay? Each affix on an item has a chance to be a to be greater in world tier 3 and world tier 4 players cannot enchant into a greater affix they can only be found okay now the other thing and we're going to get into the master working okay next only thing i also wanted to mention about the pit the pl the pit does not level up your glyphs 
okay? You're still going to have to run Nightmare Dungeons in order to level up your glyphs. So remember, the pit will not upgrade your glyphs. Now, so that's tempering. The other new mechanic in the game is masterworking, okay? Now, you don't get the materials to upgrade your gear from the pit. You get them from the Uber bosses, which give you Stygian stones. The Uber bosses are the boss ladder bosses, okay? But they're tormented versions of them. So Duriel, Vashan, and Andariel, now the new boss being added, a uh, new addition to uh, season four. Um, so these tormented versions of the bosses are level 200 bosses okay now okay great sammy torment the bosses level uber versions for a lack of a better term um they're level 200 great how do i do how do i summon how do i fight them right um so in order to summon a tormented boss you need stygian stones now these stones like i mentioned earlier are obtained from running the pit okay and you also need increased amount of summoning materials. Now, the patch notes didn't say you needed X amount of summoning materials. It just said you need an increased amount of summoning materials. Now, these summoning parts can be acquired from the Beast of Ice and Lord Zir. In order to summon these torment bosses, you need Stygian Stones, which you get from the pit. I want to reiterate this, okay? And you need summoning materials, and these summoning materials can be acquired from the Beast of Ice and Lord Seer. So Pit for the Stygian Stones, and Beast of Ice and Lord Seer for the summoning parts, summoning materials, okay? And that's how you can summon these tormented bosses, which you can upgrade your gear, okay? Masterworking, that's that's the mother load, right? So at level 100, this is when you want to start masterworking your gear, okay? So it's a late game crafting system to upgrade items using materials gathered from the pit, improving the value of your current affixes. There are 12 upgrade ranks and every fourth rank a single affix is massively upgraded, right? So 12 levels, every fourth level, is one of your affixes get a, gets massively upgraded. Uh, and other ranks significantly increase the value of all affixes. You also wanna run the pit in order to get rarer crafting materials the deeper you go into the pit, the rarer the crafting materials you get. Rare, sacred, and ancestral for the master working, okay? So the deeper you go into the pit, the rarer the crafting materials, and the rarer the crafting materials are, the better your master working potential in your affixes and gear can be. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, other notable changes that I want to quickly, that I put down in my notes that I want to highlight. Um, you can now get Uber, <laughs> Uber Uniques, not just from dropping, but you can get them by having four resplendent sparks, okay? So you can now, as if you get four resplendent sparks, you can, uh, craft a uber unique one that you want also with the codex of power changes so now the aspects not not us having to hold on to them put them in our stash they automatically go to the codex of power that potentially and and i'm curious to see how this works is that potentially could free up a lot of stash space so this is a notable change only time will tell to see the impact it'll have on our stash. And I couldn't help but notice during the campfire, 
give us stash space, give us a loot filter, that kind of stuff. So this one, I'm going to keep my eye on. And there's a lot of other notable mentions here that I've mentioned already. But this one, with the changes to the aspects going automatically to the Codex of Power and us being able to use them, on, uh, it, it's going to be interesting to see what it does to the stash space. Okay, what else do I got here? Okay, Uber Uniques will now be able to drop once we start slaying level 55 enemies. So once we start slaying level 55 enemies, there is a potential for an Uber Unique to drop anywhere in the world. Also notable change, 925 gear now drops from 95 plus enemies. Um, which is basically a tier 40, uh, 41 nightmare dungeon. And you can, you know, dependent on your character and, and how strong your character is, that's typically level 75-ish, 80 plus. So you can start collecting end game gear potentially at level 75 and 925 gear can stop, can start dropping for you. Okay, so <laughs> do you see now how there's potentially this new end game loop through the tempering, through the master working, through the tormented bosses and how the three of them connect with the materials you need. Now, I haven't mentioned Hell Tides. We know there's been a rework on Hell Tides, but I wanted to mention the crafting side of it, because this is where, in my estimation, Diablo 4 lives and dies from. Um, if this loop is, um, is exciting, is rewarding, is fun, and not a task, then they hit this out of the park if it's not that then we're going to go back to the same old conversation that's been happening so i don't know what the answer is but i'm excited purely on the fact that there's actually a loop a cycle something challenging and rewarding potentially in the game that didn't exist prior to season four. That's what's exciting. And that's on this table right now for us to get our hands wet and look at. This potential could shift everything or it could just cement the fact that this game is going nowhere. Only time will tell. But the fact that we even have something that offers this kind of end game system it's exciting and i can't get i can't wait to get my hands on it this loop is what i'm going to be testing with the ptr because to me this crafting itemization i understand all the there's been a ton of balance class changes affixes and this and removed and Hell tide, and I get it, guys. There's a lot of other stuff as well. But this end game loop around itemization and crafting, at least for me, this is what draws me into games. Is this is getting something that is basically nothing when you get it, but has potential. And then you're working and grinding the game to add to it and making it stronger and stronger and upgrading it and fine tuning it and then finally equipping it. And you're like, oh, wow, I'm a different character in the game now. That, their synergies in that feeling and that loop that is potentially in this new end game design for Diablo 4. And that's what's exciting me. Now, I know I went deep into the woods with all my notes here, but, you know, like they said, it's thousands of words of a patch note. So I tried to summarize it as much as possible. Hopefully I did a decent job, but 
really what I wanted to convey in this video is there's this new end game loop vis-a-vis -vis crafting, master working that offers something that's never been in Diablo 4, never. Um, so this is exciting. I will be streaming my PTR experience. You can come along with the journey and I'm not sharing what class I'll be playing. Um, that you'll have to tune in live with me every evening on Twitch. Now, regarding once you've, if you are participating in the PTR, and I hope you are, and some of you can't just because purely it's only available to Battle.net. And by the way, if you're a Game Pass player on a, like through the PC, you will be able to participate on the PTR. So if you have the Game Pass and access it through your PC, that is hooked up to the Battle.net platform. So you technically can participate. So for you PC Game Pass users, you will be part of this PTR if you want to choose to participate. I just wanted, just thought of that. I wanted to mention it. So don't miss out if you're a PC Game Pass user. Now, you've done all this. You're going to participate in the PTR, hopefully. And please, if you're going to participate in the PTR, please provide your feedback. This is how the games get better. How do you uh, provide feedback, you ask? Well, I'm glad you asked. Perfect segue into what I wanted to mention. Very simple. And I'm going to read from my notes. You can provide feedback through the in-game feedback tool or the Diablo 4 PTR forum. Pressing the escape key while in-game now will bring up report a bug menu. You can select the drop-down filter and select end game feedback tool to provide feedback without leaving the game. So while in game, hit escape, report a bug, hit the, um, select the in game feedback tool, go to town on your feedback and send it off. Please, if you're going to participate in the PTR, provide the feedback. They're asking for it, give it. Okay, good, bad, indifferent, whatever. Please provide the PTR feedback. Okay, guys, that's it. Sorry for the long-winded uh, thing, but I wanted to give you my take. This endgame loop that I subscribe described, um, it's exciting. I, I, I can't, I've never felt excited like this in Diablo 4 since the game launched. So it's going to be exciting to see what it's like. I hope they deliver on it, but only time will tell. Let me know your thoughts. Are you participating? Did I forget anything uh, in this video? Please let me know. Uh, sorry if I butchered the explanation. There's a lot here. Um, I personally already see some great signs in this mechanic. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to stay true to my content. I also have some red flags that I see potentially happening here but I'm not gonna say it until I experience it in the PTR. Regardless, this is exciting and this is new and this is needed in uh, Diablo 4, if you ask me if this game has any hope of getting to where it needs to be. So for that, I wanna thank you for watching my video. Please chime in on the comment section. I wanna hear your thoughts and comments. And as always, if you can like, comment, and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. And um, I haven't said this in a long time, but we'll see you in Sanctuary. See you later. The opinions expressed in this video are mine and solely mine. Healthy debate is always encouraged. Hate is never welcomed. So get over it.